CNC Speedwell in the West Midlands, they're always looking to try and improve their efficiency. But it's not just about machine tools, robot automation, software. There's other things they're looking at as well. And there's a small clue just here and over my shoulder. Jason, this is an absolutely fantastic system in the background, Swarf management, but first of all, people who don't know you, Jason Stippling, JNS Engineering, what do you guys do? Uh, we specialise in Swarf systems, from centrifuges to crushers to big briquette systems like this one. And this, I mean, I've never seen anything like it, it's absolutely fantastic, but it's a complicated system, but in simple terms, Swarf in one end, briquettes out the other. Exactly right, yeah. But it's not quite that simple. You've got the brief, Steve Bywell, GM at CNC Speedwell, what did he ask? Basically, we had to brick out 100 tonnes of cast iron per week, loose cast iron. 100 tonnes? 100 tonnes, okay. yeah. So, um, basically, we have four hoppers. Um, it can store 11 tonnes of uh, cast iron in the hoppers. It's all fully automated. As soon as they put the swarf in, it automatically starts, briquettes it. As soon as the weight has been reached, the machine stops. They then can change the bin. Uh, restart it again and it's fully automatic until the weight is reached again. So we always say about spindles turning 24-7, this machine is running? 24-7. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. I'm thinking loads of cost savings, loads of efficiencies, but you mentioned 100 tonnes of swarf. How many machines are they running here? They're running 140 um, twin spindle machining centres here. Okay, hence so much swarf. So yeah. that swarf's coming in, it's showcasing a lot of cost savings, a lot of efficiencies. So what's that, previously, what was happen happening with that swarf? Uh, the swarf uh, previously was being shipped to India and also Turkey for processing. So we've reduced the carbon input uh, a lot. Okay, so not only saving money, carbon footprint, environmentally friendly. Exactly right, yeah. Okay, um, now they've got their own foundry on site. Yep. So I'm assuming this, these briquettes are going back there? Yep, uh, as soon as they've been briquetted, uh, we have to keep the moisture level below 2%. Right. Uh, they're then going straight back to the foundry, re-smelted, and the part is then re-machined. Re right, so smelted, re-machined, robot loaded, robot loaded yep. more swarf back here. Back in again, and the whole system starts again. Nice, absolutely brilliant. And again, a complicated system made very simple. But you mentioned here, in terms of the, the levels of the liquid, why? Yeah. Well, the moisture level has to be uh, below 2% for their foundries to work, to stop the briquettes exploding, and for them to do a nice melt, to stop it floating on the surface as right. well. So, Fairly important process, you don't want things exploding. No. I mean, again, looks very simple, but the RAMs, for example, that's part of the process. What's going on with those? Well, we can uh, program the briquette length. Every RAM and uh, every cylinder has a, a linear monitoring scale on it, so we know the position of every single uh, cylinder. It means then that we can control the briquette length, which in turn controls the moisture level. Right, okay, so no explosions. Yeah, exactly, Brilliant. yeah. I mean, when this is running 24-7, we can actually uh, briquette 168 uh, tonnes of, uh, of swarf. That's uh, absolutely phenomenal figures, yeah, really. Is. Yeah. Now, another thing you mentioned, traceability? Uh, yeah, traceability. So, uh, the cast iron, iron has different additives put to it, um, and we have a clean-down system. So, each hopper uh, can run a different type of material. So they press a button, it cleans the whole system down. They can then run a different type of cast iron with a different additive in it. So they can trace the briquettes. It's all labeled up after in the boxes, ship back to the, fern, uh, the foundry. They then don't have to re-add those additives in, which they were previously doing from buying in raw material. Again, more cost saving, more efficiency. Exactly right. Right, so it's just efficient, like I said, more cost saving, more efficient all around. It's really, it's fantastic. The whole thing is really, really impressive not seen one like this before. A key question, I think, most of well, all engineers out there, well, a couple of things, what would be their return on investment? Uh, here, the return on investment is about a one year, and it, it may even be uh, slightly less now, because we've realized that we can actually, we are actually reclaiming 1,000 uh, litres of coolant per day. Right, so that's another sort of cost-saving efficiency yeah. that's come out of this whole process. Yeah, 7,000 litres a week, because they run seven days a week here, Absolutely. 24 hours a day. Right, and again, absolutely fantastic system. I'm thinking, well, 140 machines tools here, but I'm, let's say, a standard engineer, I'm say I've got 10 machines. This, you know, can you, can you come like that? Oh yeah, we do uh, small machines that go under individual, uh, briquette machines that go under individual machines. We also do centrifuges, and we do medium-sized briquette machines. We can cater for every, everyone. Okay, so the simple answer is, fantastic return on investment, fantastic efficiencies, swarf management, Contact yeah. yourselves. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs>